Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we'll use one of these party favors from the Dollar Tree, a lace doily from Dollar General, some gold tool from Hobby Lobby, a microfiber cloth from the Dollar Tree, a piece of chenille stem, some gold ribbon off of an old Dollar Tree piece, some chalk paint, my glue gun and some glue sticks, a Sharpie, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I want to do is paint my party favor. This looks like an old badminton birdie to me, and I thought that it had the perfect shape to make an angel with, but I did need to color that bright yellow head <laughs> and that big smiling face. Once our paint was dry, I took that little piece of microfiber cloth I had and trimmed it down. Then I just wrapped it around the body of my piece. I glued it around the neck and made sure that it fit tightly. And then I put a bead of glue down the back as well. This is just going to give me a base so that the mesh part doesn't show through my lace. Now I'm taking one of those lace doilies and folding it in force. I cut off the tip of it and then slipped it over the head of my party favor. Now I'm just going to glue it up around the base of the head and this gives me my little dress. We'll take our gold tool and I wrapped it around my hand about five times, slipped the loops off, took a piece of twine, wrapped around the middle, and tied it in a knot. This is similar to a bow, but it's going to serve as the wings for our angel. I just fluffed it out and made sure that it was going to sit the way I wanted it to. Now I'm taking that little piece of gold ribbon and tying it around the base of the head. This gives it a cute little bow, but it also covers that seam where we attach that lace. Then I just use some hot glue and attach my wings to the back of my angel. I took my pencil and made two little colon marks for the eyes and one for the mouth and then filled it in with my Sharpie. Now I thought I had some gold chenille stems, but when I went to find them, I realized I was completely out and I didn't want to have to go back to town. So I took one of my white chenille stems and I just wrapped this gold ribbon all around it and then secured it on the ends. It worked just as well for what I needed. I clipped it off and then made a circle and glued those ends together and that's going to be our halo. I just use a little bit of hot glue and attach it to the back of the head so that it stands up. To make a hanger, I took a piece of twine and I glued both ends down to the base of the head. And there's our angel ornament. I love this. It is another simple ornament that's so easy to make, yet it is so lovely when it's hanging on your tree. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's make some Christmas ornaments using these three inch chippy brushes. I got mine at Harbor Freight for 99 cents each. This faux fur ribbon, I got mine at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off. Some chipboard star stickers. Some one inch split balls. They come six to a pack for $2.49 at Hobby Lobby. I got mine with a 40% off coupon some red chalk paint, a small piece of this red gingham fabric, some of this black and white gingham fabric, some buffalo check scrapbook paper, and finally some Mod Podge and a paintbrush to spread it on. The first thing I'm going to do is take my red chalk paint and I'm going to paint a line across each side and then I'm going to paint down the edges all the way around. And then I do decide to paint one side completely. And so I will cover the back side with just red chalk paint. And then I decide I really need to cover my holes because I don't want my fabric or my paper to sink in. You should do this before you paint and not like I did and had to fix it. And now I'm taking those one inch half balls that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm going to give them two coats of this plaster chalk paint. 
And now I'm taking my Mod Podge and applying it to my paintbrush handle, giving it a generous coat. And I'm first going to apply the scrapbook paper to the first one. And I'm going to smooth it down really well and then lay it aside to let it dry. And then I'm going in on my second one, applying my Mod Podge and my black and white check fabric. And then I apply it on the outside as well. Fabric is very thick and this helps it adhere well. And then I do the same thing with the red and white gingham. When the scrapbook paper is dry, I come back and put a coat of Mod Podge on the outside of it as well. I'm going to cut this faux fur ribbon at six and three quarters inches long, and then I'm going to fold it in half and cut it right down the middle, and that will give me two pieces to use on two of my ornaments. I'm going to use a combination of scissors and my utility knife to trim out all of my Mod Podged pieces. The fabric as well as the scrapbook paper. And now I'm taking those half balls and I'm going to glue them right at that line at the bottom and then put on my fur and then glue it across the back as well. Totally covering the silver part. And then I do the same for the other two. And now I'm taking some twine and I'm going to tie several knots at the bottom so that I can glue it in place where the original hole was. I'll just use a little hot glue and glue that down. And then I decide I want to use a pom-pom and place it at the top. It just didn't seem like a Santa hat without a little palm at the top. But that's totally optional. I think he turned out cute. And there we have all three so far. And now I'm going to take some of those chipboard stickers and place a silver star on a couple of my ornaments. And then I come in with a silk holly leaf and some berries and dress up the third one. And there they are. I love how these turned out. I think they're going to be so cute on our farmhouse Christmas tree. I hope you like these Santa gnomes as much as I do. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of the mini vine wreaths from Hobby Lobby. One of these little wood peg people I got from Goodwill, but you can get them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. A piece of this microfiber cloth, some twine, a little banner that I traced from the computer, a piece of foam board, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was cut out my pattern for my banner. I found this just by googling simple banner, and then I just held my paper up to the computer and traced it off. So once I get it cut out, I trace it onto a small piece of foam board, and then I use my Zacto knife and cut it out. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and write a door hem on my banner. I did use my pencil and trace it out first because I didn't trust myself to get it even. Now I'm going to take a piece of twine. I looped it up and tied a knot. Then I looped it around my wreath and pulled and this gave me my hanger. Then we just use some hot glue and glue our banner down right on top of it. Now I'm going to take this little wood peg person and a piece of my microfiber cloth and I just glue it around him, making sure that I get it close to the neck and then I trim it up, trim off that bottom and glue down the bottom. Now it looks like he's swaddled. We glue that piece onto the bottom of our wreath. And there's our baby Jesus. 
I really love this piece so much and it was so simple to make. You could even get the kids involved with this one. In this video, we are spotlighting 30 of our best Christmas ornaments that have been featured in our videos, plus five bonus projects that we are sprinkling in. We hope that you will love having them all together. If you are new here, we would love it if you will hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and stay tuned because we have lots of DIYs coming your way. For our second project, we're going to need some twine. I got this at the Dollar Tree. Some glue, just all purpose white glue. Some really tiny balloons. These came from the Dollar Tree and they are actually water balloons. I need a bowl. I'm using a popsicle stick as a stirrer. And I need a little water. I have some extra cups that I'm going to be putting our ornaments on to dry. And a couple of bows from my stash to add to the end project. I'm blowing up my balloon, keeping as much of a round shape as possible. Tie a knot at the top. And then I'm going to take my glue and start mixing it in my bowl with my water. You want about a one-to-one -one ratio, half glue, half water. And I just mix and stir until I get exactly what I want. Because you don't want the glue solution to be too watered down. And now I'm taking my twine and I'm going to soak it in my glue. It always takes about twice as much as I first think it's going to take. And I'm going to tie my twine in a knot at the top of my balloon to secure it. And then I just lather the glue around the balloon to help hold it on. And then I just start rolling it around my balloon in a random pattern. I make sure that some of my strings are going at a diagonal, some are running vertical, and also horizontal. When I get it full as I think I'm going to want it, then I just lay it out to dry on my cup. And once it's dry, I come back in and I burst the balloon. I left these drying for about two days, which was way too long, which means my balloon got kind of stuck to the side. But that's okay, I can work with it. I just use my little pokey tool and go in and pop all the various areas and I eventually work it all loose. I'm going to use a bit of that twine and come in and tie my ornament holder. And finally, I will add our bow at the top, right in the middle of where the string comes in and just attach it with a little hot glue. And there they hang. I love how these turned out. I have about six made, and of course, I'm going to make a whole bunch more. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use two wood slices that I got from Arteza, but they also sell these at Hobby Lobby. A couple of strands from a leftover mop head, some fabric from these old pajama pants, some felt, either some ribbon or some lace, some twine, a couple of these little flat back wood buttons that I picked up from Hobby Lobby, some Waverly chalk paint, a pattern of some gnomes I sketched out, a drill, my glue gun, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole in the top of my wood slices. I'm going to use this to put my hanger through for my ornaments. Now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint and painting the front of my wood slices. I do want to leave a little border around the edge so you can see the natural wood. And I have a shaky hand when it comes to painting. So I painted most of it, then I took my furniture repair marker and finished off those edges. Now I'm just going to cut out my little pattern that I sketched. Yeah, I know it's really rough, but it gave me the dimensions I needed to fit on my little wood slice. 
I traced my hats onto the felt and I did mark them with an M and a W so I would know which one was the girls and which one was the boys. Now I'm just going to cut off a small piece of fabric from my old pajama pants and I traced the little body parts around that and cut those out. Here I'm just placing my pieces on so I know how I have to line them up to make them fit onto this ornament. Then I just used some hot glue and glued the body down. Now we're gonna take our mop string and see how long we need it to be her hair. And I originally cut off two pieces, but I do end up using three. I unravel it at the top, glued it down, and then I unraveled the rest of it. I'm going to be braiding this, so I wanted to have six strands, and that's why I cut a third one. Now we'll glue down the other side. Now we're just going to attach the hat on top of that, and I did have to trim it up a little bit because the string was sticking out the sides of the hat. And then we'll just glue down the rest of our hat. Now I'm going to very carefully braid this. It was so tiny, I only got a couple of little braids in there. And I did end up using this real thin ribbon and I only tied it in a knot because it was so tiny my big fingers could not tie a bow in that. And then I just trimmed up the ends of her hair. Now I'm gonna take one of those little wooden buttons and glue it right in the middle for her nose. And then we'll start on our boy. I glue down his body. I figured out how long I needed my string to be for his beard. And for his beard, I think I ended up cutting like six pieces. And I unraveled the edge and I decided to glue his beard straight onto the hat instead of doing it onto the wood. I think this is easier and hopefully will prevent having that stick out the edges like it did on the girls. So I just glue down the edge and then I unravel the rest of the pieces. Actually, I think I used five pieces on this. Once I got it across the top, I thought it needed a little more fullness, so I put in one more piece. Then I just glue the hat down, and then I just trim up his beard, give him a little bit of a haircut. We'll glue his nose down, and we have our boy. I wanted to sketch out the words on this with a pencil, because I don't trust my handwriting to get it even. But once I got it sketched out, I used my little white gel marker that I get from Arteza and filled in my words. I love these markers. They are perfect for writing on dark surfaces. Now we're just going to cut two pieces of twine and fold it in half. I threaded it from the back and made a loop and then I slipped my thread through there and tied a knot and this is going to be our hanger and there's our little gnome ornaments i love these guys so much it took me a while to get on the gnome train but now i am totally on board i think these guys are adorable and i can't wait to use them on our farmhouse christmas tree hey y'all it's Kay. let's make a quick ornament for the christmas tree using this leftover piece of a sign where i made a big sign recently. I'm going to use one of these ornaments that I got at the Dollar Tree in a pack of five. Some ribbons, this burlap and this gingham, and also a wired garland tie, some red and black chalk paint, and a few of these balls from this table scatter. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this ribbon that was on the sign. And then I'm going to come in with my black chalk paint and paint the edges and the front, and then allow that to dry. I'm only putting on one coat. Now I'm taking this Merry Christmas that is glittery, and I'm going to cover it with this red chalk paint and kind of tone it down and make it more of a farmhouse type Merry Christmas. I thought the glitter was just too overpowering for our farmhouse Christmas tree. And now I'm taking this burlap ribbon and I'm going to measure out a piece to go around the entire ornament. 
I'm going to start gluing it at approximately the middle of the back and wrap it all the way around and back around to the back and tack it down. I'm not going to glue it completely right now because the next thing I want to do is put a tie on there. Let's put our Merry Christmas on the front, just a little hot glue, and center it as best we can. And then we're going to go back in and use a piece of leftover twine and attach it in the corners. This will be how we hang it on our tree. And go back and finish attaching all of the burlap ribbon. And now I'm going to make a simple six loop bow by just looping this ribbon around. The ribbon is not white, it is red and a khaki color, a natural color. But I'm making a six loop bow and I'll just cut that off. Use a piece of twine, wrap it around several times and tie it in a knot. And then we'll just fluff out that bow, trim off the edges. And we're gonna place it there in the corner. Little hot glue. And now I'm taking that garland tie and I'm going to loop it around in a circle and make sort of a miniature wreath. I just cut it with my wire cutters and then use a little hot glue to attach it on top of the ribbon. And then I'm taking three of those little tiny balls from that table scatter and placing those on the wreath. And that's all there is to it. I love how it turned out though. It is simply cute. Merry Christmas, y'all. For our second ornament, I'm going to be using these mini bales that I picked up from the Dollar General, some wooden beads, some twine, some ribbon, a skewer, some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and miscellaneous tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was put 10 of my wooden beads on my skewer and then I added a drop of glue to the end to hold them in place and I took my paintbrush and painted them. They do move around a lot, they twist and turn, but just keep painting. This chalk paint dries really fast, so it's not hard to get a good coat on these beads. I just kept turning my skewer and painting around until I had all of them covered. Now I'm going to take some twine and I will string on five of my wooden beads then I take my jingle bell and I tie it onto the end of my twine. I did a double knot and I put a little drop of glue to make sure everything held in place. I forgot one of my beads. <laughs> then I loop my twine to make a hanger and I tie a double knot in the end of that. And trim it off. Now we're going to do the other one. Just string our beads onto our twine. Do a double knot to tie our jingle bell on the end. I do put a drop of glue to hold everything in place. I cut my twine, make a loop, and tie a double knot in the end to make a hanger. Now I'm going to use this little black and white ribbon that I had left over from the other ornaments that I made and make a simple bow. I just cross my ends over each other until you get a cute little bow. Then I pinch up the center and take a piece of twine, wrap around a couple of times, and tie it in a knot. Then I just trim my twine, I dovetail the ends of my ribbon, and I glue it to the top of my beads. We'll do that one more time, cross those ends over each other to make a simple little bow, Wrap our twine around the middle and tie it off. I love these simple little bows. They are so easy to make. Then you just trim off your twine, dovetail your ends, and glue it to your ornament.
and there's our little farmhouse jingle bell ornaments. I think I like these even better than the last ones. They are going to be so cute on our farmhouse Christmas tree. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using some one inch and some three eighths inch buffalo check ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. I need some small screw eyes. They don't say what size, but they're really tiny. These three frames that I got from the Dollar Tree. You can use any color. It doesn't matter because we're going to be replacing all of that. This scrapbook paper that I also got at Hobby Lobby. You only need one sheet. I'm using some leftover stickers from my collection, from all of my paper crafting. They're by Echo Park. And of course you need some Mod Podge, some paint, and some paint brushes. I'm going to be using red and white on this project. And of course I'll need some tools like my hot glue gun and some scissors. First thing you want to do is remove the little hard stickers that are in the middle of these frames and also take off the back. The next thing I'm going to do is remove all of the slick paper that was on these center pieces. And then I'll remove all of it from the background as well. I want my project to look really finished because I'm going to hang it on my Christmas tree. The second one I did, and the third, did not require nearly as much time, but I didn't record those. Wouldn't you just know? The next thing I want to do is give my frames a coat of white chalk paint as a good base. That's why it really doesn't matter what color you buy at the Dollar Tree. The next thing I'm going to do is coat the entire frame with some red chalk paint. I just love the coverage on this paint. And finally, I'll get out my sandpaper and distress the edges by removing just some of the paint. I'm going to trace the background of all three of my pages onto my scrapbook paper. And then I'll just come back and cut that out. I discovered if I was pretty careful that each one of my frames would be laid out exactly the same and they would all end up with a white square right in the middle. And now I'm taking my Mod Podge and applying generously to that background. And then I'm going to apply my background paper. And I'll come back and coat the top as well. It makes for a durable finish, but it's also somewhat shiny. And now I'm taking those hard center pieces Using my wire cutters, I'm just trimming them down. I want them to be somewhat smaller than the stickers I'm going to be putting on there. We'll still have that wonderful 3D effect. So I'll use Mod Podge once again and place on my stickers. And then I'm going to coat the outside with Mod Podge. And now I'll just replace the backs to my frames. Use a little hot glue in the corners. And I'll also apply the center piece back into the frame by putting a dollop of hot glue right in that center square. And reapply all these wooden pieces. I'm going to be using these screw eyes and putting them in the center of the frame top so that I can hang my ornament from the tree. I'm using my wide buffalo check ribbon and make a simple bow. I'll use my thin ribbon and tie it right in the middle 
to secure the bow. I'm allowing enough length on this ribbon so that I can also make it my ornament hanger. Dovetail those ends. And then we'll loop it through the screw eye, tie a knot at the bottom. I'm securing it with a little bit of hot glue as well. And then I'll tie another knot at the top of the string. And just trim up those edges. And there they hang. I have them displayed here on this bookshelf that I'm working on, but I wanted to give you kind of an idea of them hanging in a Christmas tree. I love how this project turned out. For this project, we're going to be using these cinnamon sticks. They are about eight inches long. I got these at Hobby Lobby. I have some fabric strips that I got at Hobby Lobby. We'll use a few of these. And then I have an assortment of ribbons that we're going to be using in the project as well. I'm also going to be using some twine as my tie to hold on my ornament. I'll need a few tools, mostly my scissors and my hot glue gun. And that's pretty much it for this project. I'm going to cut my twine. I'm just gonna eyeball it and cut it about there. I'm going to tie a knot in it here at the bottom. And then I'm going to glue it onto this back side here and bring it down just a little ways. And that way, as we're working, our ribbon will cover this. So let me glue that on. I'm going to cut my first piece of ribbon at about six inches. It doesn't have to be exactly that. It will all get trimmed in the end anyway. So we'll put our first piece on. I'm going to tie it as close to the middle as possible. And as you turn it over, you can see that will be the front. And now I have a piece of cloth. I'm going to fold it in half and tie it on next. And I'm gonna snug it right up next to that first one. This piece I've cut about eight inches, just to give myself some wiggle room. I love this little red truck ribbon. It came from Hobby Lobby. That's the next color. This ribbon came from the Dollar Tree. And then I just keep alternating my ribbons as I go down my cinnamon stick. As you've probably guessed, we're making a Christmas tree. At the end, we'll just trim it up and give it a tree shape. I am using all the shades of red and black that we're going to be using in our farmhouse Christmas tree. Many of the ribbons get used a second time as well. Have you made this type of ornament before? I'm measuring out on each side at the bottom about three inches and then about an inch and a half at the top. And then I just kind of trim up my ribbons at an angle. And you just come back in and trim the ones you missed. Kind of like giving it a haircut. And I turn it upside down to work on the second side. Yeah, 
And to be the little star at the top, I'm just going to use one of these buttons from my collection. And there it is. I think it's going to be a great addition to our farmhouse Christmas tree this year. Just to let you know a little bit about Trish and I, we really are first cousins and we have a passion for crafting. We love to share our videos with you on YouTube and we also like to meet people and share our crafts at craft shows. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use two clear ornaments from the Dollar Tree, some buttons from Hobby Lobby, a mini tree from the Dollar Tree, one of these nativity ornaments from Walmart, a piece of microfiber cloth from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon, I only end up using the Believe, some fishing line, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was remove the tags from my ornaments and take off the caps. I took my microfiber cloth and I used the cap as a pattern and cut two circles out of my microfiber. Once I get those, I use a little bit of hot glue and glue them into the caps. Now I'm going to remove that little silver piece and then I glue my nativity onto the cap and I take one of the stars from that set, put some fishing line through it and tie a knot. I feed it up through the top of my ornament and then I use a little bit of hot glue in the cap and glue it to it. Now when I replace the cap, my star hangs down into my ornament. I screw that back onto the base and that's our first ornament. Now I'm going to use my little buttons from Hobby Lobby and I clip off the shanks that are on the back of them with my wire clippers and I use a little bit of hot glue on the bottom and attach them to the base. They are a little wobbly but that's okay. I'm going to take one of my mini trees from the Dollar Tree and glue it behind them and that helps to stabilize them. Now we'll just use a little bit of hot glue on our deer and attach him as well. Now we can put our cap back on and I'm going to take some of my Believe ribbon and make a small bow. I do this just by looping the ends over each other and then I take a piece of twine, wrap around the middle and tie a knot. This gives me a cute, simple little bow. We attach it to the top of our ornament with some hot glue and they are ready. I love how these turn out. They are so simple and so cute. You can use anything you would like in these. You can use miniature ornaments from Walmart. You can use buttons from Hobby Lobby. Anything you put in them just turns out adorable and it's a great way to personalize your tree. Hey y'all, it's Kay. It's time to make some Christmas ornaments. We're going to use these two grapevine wreaths. This is about a six inch wreath and this is about a three inch wreath. I could not find a four one, but I think it will work. I have some leftover scrap burlap, some of this red and white twine. I have two cute ribbons from my stash, two different widths. They both have a similar pattern, but this one has snowflakes on it. I got these three buttons from my stash, one K cup, some floral wire, some black cardstock, and a few simple tools. The first thing I'm going to do is take about 24 inches of this floral wire, and then I'm going to go in here, find a sweet spot, and I'm going to wire this piece on top of this one. And yes, we're going to be making a snowman, a rustic snowman for our farmhouse Christmas tree. Now I'm just going to take some of this fix-all adhesive and put a little of it on here. And then I'm going to use my hot glue gun as well, but I decided this would just give it a little bit extra.
for my snowman's hat, I'm just going to take this little spool of ribbon and I'm going to trace a circle to be the brim of my hat. This is some really heavy duty cardstock. And I went in and traced the smallest part of my cup and I cut a hole right in the center of my hat. Now I'm going to trace this top piece on here and cut it out as well so I can glue it on there and I'll have a finished look. So I glued my circle right into that center and then I took out some black chalk paint and decided I would just paint my little cake up all over including my cardstock circle. And now I'm going to glue my cup to the brim that I cut. And after that, I'm going to give it a coat of black chalk paint as well. And now I'm just going to cut out my snowman by trimming that fabric off the back just close enough that it won't show from the front. And then I'm going to take some ribbon and tie it where the two wreaths meet to cover my wire. And then I'm going to fashion a bow out of some different ribbon that I didn't show you. This is wired ribbon. And I'm just making a two loop bow on each side. Tying it off with that smaller ribbon. And then just trimming it up. I'm going to dovetail those ends. And then fit it to my snowman. I decided I needed one more piece of ribbon to finish covering up that wire completely. And then I just glue on my bow. I'm cutting the back off of my buttons, the little shank with my wire cutters, and then I'm just going to glue them on. And once I started fitting them, I found out I only needed two. And then I fit my hat and decide where I want it to go. And just use a little hot glue and attach it to the top. And then I'm attaching a hanger at the back. And there it hangs on my closet door. I cannot wait to put this on our farmhouse tree. It's about 10 inches tall, by the way. For this project, I'm going to use some scrap pieces that I cut off paint stirrer sticks used in other projects, some mini popsicle sticks that I got at the Dollar Tree, some ink Waverly chalk paint, some white chalk paint, some iridescent glitter, and some twine. I'm going to be making farmhouse decor inspired snowmen and thought these scrap pieces would be perfect. First, I paint the sticks with my white chalk paint. I painted the front and the back of my stirrer sticks. I love using chalk paint because most of the time it only takes one coat to get good coverage. Now I'm going to paint my popsicle sticks with the black chalk paint. These are so tiny and so cute. I'm already thinking of other projects that I can use them on. What would you use these small popsicle sticks for? Once everything is dry, I glue my popsicle sticks onto my white pieces with some hot glue. This is going to be the brim of my snowman's hat. I glued them at an angle because I think he would have a jaunty air to his style. Now I'm going to take my black chalk paint and paint the top part of my sticks on the front, back, and sides to complete my snowman's hat. This is such a simple and fun project. 
This would be a perfect rainy day craft to do with the kids. The next step is going to be making his face. I took a pencil and sketched out some eyes, a coal mouth, and a carrot nose on each one. Then I took a black permanent marker and filled in the eyes and mouth. Now I'm just going to use some orange acrylic paint I had on hand and paint in his little carrot nose. Y'all know I can't just leave these flat. So I took my Mod Podge, painted over my snowman's face and body, and added some iridescent glitter to it. Now he will glimmer like snow does in the sun. Yes, I know I'm from the south, but I've seen snow a few times in my life, and I love the shimmer it gets when the sun shines on it. Of course we have to sparkle up his hat as well. So I paint my Mod Podge over the hat and apply some black glitter to it. I think this really makes him pop. To make the hanger to put him on the tree, I use some twine and tie a simple knot in the bottom. Then I just use my hot glue to attach it to the back of my snowman. I thought our snowman needed some scarves, so I grabbed a scrap piece of fleece that I had in my stash and cut it into small strips. Then I just tied it around his neck and glued the ends down. For the smaller snowman bust, I just wrapped it around and glued it down. And there's our rustic farmhouse Christmas snowman ornaments. I think these are just precious and the kids would love to make them with you. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's make a big bow ornament for the tree. I'm going to use this black and white gingham ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some red wood beads, I got mine at Hobby Lobby. This wooden gift tag, I got mine in a pack at Walmart. And finally, some jute twine. I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to come in with this Dollar Tree two and a half inch ribbon and I'm going to make a six inch tail and then four four inch loops. So we're making about an eight inch bow. Now I'm going to use a zip tie and just pull it tight right around the middle of my bow. That will just keep it nice and taut. And then I'll fluff it up and dovetail my ends. And now I'm going to take a piece of jute about 14 inches long, fold it in half, and make a slip knot right there in the middle of my bow. And then I'll take another piece of jute and I'm going to cut off just a nice length and tie it around the middle of the bow and then wrap it several times and that's just to hide the zip tie. And that gives it also more of a farmhouse look. And now I'm going to take those strings at the top and I'm going to go in and string on 10 red beads on each side. I just use a little water to help keep it together, the twine that is, and string them on. And when I get 10 on each side, I'm going to come back in and tie a knot at the top and then tie a second knot as well so that I can hang it easily on the tree either from the beads or from the second knot. 
And now I'm taking a wooden tag and I'm going to take off the tie and then come in with my white chalk paint and paint the entire tag on the front and the back with white chalk paint. Now replace that tie and then come in and make a simple loopy bow with some buffalo check ribbon. Tie a little twine around the middle and wrap it several times. And then we'll attach it right to the top of our tag. And then I'm writing Merry Christmas on our tag just with a permanent marker. And I'll attach it with a little glue at the back. And there's our bow. I love this ornament so much. I hope I get to make about five more. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this ornament, we're going to be using one of these wooden ornament shapes that I got at the Dollar Tree. One of these Merry Christmas ornaments, they came in a package of five from the Dollar Tree. This fabric remnant, some Mod Podge, the Waverly chalk paint in the colors crimson and white, a paintbrush and some jute. I got mine at Hobby Lobby with a coupon. The first thing I'm going to do is go in and of course take off this tag. We won't need that. And then I just start removing the items on the ornament. The silver at the top we're going to reuse. It popped right off with my screwdriver. And then I just go in and pull off that entire backing. It came right off. And I'm taking my red Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a coat of paint on all sides and edges. And now I'm going to go in with a paintbrush and paint over the Merry Christmas that is in the gold glitter with my white chalk paint. I love how it made the Merry Christmas actually look like snow. And now I'm going to put on a nice even coat of Mod Podge. And I'll place on my fabric, being careful to line it up with the top of the ornament so that the line will go straight across. And I'll just smooth that out as best I can. And now I'll come in with a coat of Mod Podge on the top of the fabric as well. Now that I have allowed all of the Mod Podge to dry, I'm going to go in and cut out my ornament just using my detail scissors. I'll use some hot glue and glue that cap back on the top of the ornament. And now we'll make a simple hanger just using a piece of jute and tying a knot at the bottom and then using it to make a slip knot to attach it to the ornament. And finally, a little hot glue will attach our Merry Christmas right to the front of the ornament. And there it is. It's very simple, but I just love it. And I think it's going to look amazing on our farmhouse Christmas tree. And I thought you'd like to see it hanging on my tree. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Kay. Let's make some wooden Christmas ornaments using these wood planks that I got at the Dollar Tree. They come six to a package and they are about three inches by seven inches. I'll use some jute twine. These words that I cut on my Cameo Silhouette, you could also use letter stickers that you get at the Dollar Tree. Some buffalo check ribbon and some Waverly white chalk paint and a paintbrush. We'll begin by covering both of our boards in white chalk paint. I'm going to make sure I paint all of the edges nicely and both fronts. And now we'll begin placing on our words. These are my son's names. I'm going to go in and burnish it carefully and then remove that clear background this was the clear contact paper that I got from the Dollar Tree, and it was quite sticky. But I keep working with it, and it comes off. 
And now I'm going to put a drop of glue in the middle side and wrap my jute twine about twice around and then glue it down again and then just cut off the excess. Then I'll turn to the other side, a drop of glue, wrap it twice, place some more glue and trim it up as well. And now I'm taking the second one and doing the same thing. I'm going to put two rolls around my piece of wood. And now I'm going to come back in with a piece of jute twine and tie it into the ropes at the back. I use that paintbrush to push it through. And then I just cut off a length and tie it under the second side as well. I just make a knot. Well, actually a couple of knots and then cut that off. And then I go back to the second one and do the same thing. Go up under the ropes I've already put on there and tie it off. And now I'm going to make a simple bow using about a 14 inch piece of this buffalo check ribbon. I dovetailed my edges and then I just pinch it in the middle and make a simple bow, wrap the jute twine around it about twice and then tie it off at the back. Give it a little fluffing, check the placement, and then I come back in and trim my ends again. I decided that they were too long, my ribbon tails. So cut off the excess twine, and then we'll glue it right there in the corner. Do the second one, and there they are, hanging on the tree. I love how these turned out. Merry Christmas, y'all! For our next project, we're going to use these wood slices that I got at Hobby Lobby to make some Ray Dunn inspired ornament. These wood slices are only $4.99 for the bag and I used my 40% off coupon so they were only $3 and I have several projects in mind for them. I picked out three that were roughly the same size and used a small piece of sandpaper to smooth out the front. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and paint the inside of the ornament. I leave a small strip around the edge to show the natural wood. Do you stick with the same theme for your Christmas tree each year, or do you like to change it up? Kay and I are going to do several trees at my house this year to decorate for an open house. I want to have one that is farmhouse theme, and these should fit in perfectly on that tree. I'm going to add words to my ornament. As you all know, I don't like my handwriting, so I printed out my words using the skinny font and colored over the back with a piece of chalk. I lay my paper over my ornament and trace over the word to transfer it to my wood. I'm going to use a chalk marker to fill in my words. I started off using this one from the Dollar Tree, but I really didn't like it because it made the word way too chunky and it lost that Ray Dunn feel. I switched to a fine tip marker and it worked much better. Now I just painted over the love ornament and redid the word with my fine tip marker. To be able to add a hanger to my ornament, I'm going to use some eye screws that I got from the wood section at Hobby Lobby. You can also get these at any home store. I took a small nail and pressed it into the top of the ornament to give me a starting point, and then I just twisted in my eye screw.
I'm going to be adding some of these wood beads to my ornaments, so I counted out four of the natural wood color for each one. I'm going to use a small piece of twine to string my beads and make my hanger. I put a small bit of glue at the end of my twine and twist it between my fingers to make it stiff for stringing. Once I got all four beads strung, I looped up a piece of the twine and then went back through my beads. This was a little tricky, but with a little finessing and using my nail to help push the twine, I got it back through all of the beads. Now I just cut the end, thread it through my screw, double knot it, and we have a cute hanger. I repeated the process for each one. Y'all know I have to dress these up a little, so we're going to make some little bows out of the thin checked ribbon. I just cut a small piece of ribbon, loop it back over itself to form a bow, wrap a small piece of twine around the center several times and tie it in a knot at the back, dovetail my ends, and we have an adorable little bow. This is really the simplest way to make a cute bow. Now I just use a little hot glue to attach the bow to the hanger over the knot I made in the twine. And there is our Ray Dunn inspired ornaments. I love these so much. I will definitely be making more of them for our farmhouse themed Christmas tree. We love hearing from y'all. It really just makes our day. Make sure you write down in the comments and let us know which project is your favorite. And if you have any suggestions, please leave those there as well. We love seeing all the ideas you guys have. For our second project today, let's make some Christmas ornaments to go on our farmhouse Christmas tree. I'm going to use these lanterns that I got from the Dollar Tree, some various ribbons from my stash, two different kinds of red trucks, some red berries that I got from the Dollar Tree, and some tools from my stash as well. First, I'm going to begin with my first one by taking one of these green evergreen twists that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it right around the bottom. I'll just use a little hot glue to keep it in place. To me nothing says Christmas like evergreens. We're just going to take these ornaments up a notch or two. And now I'll just make a really simple bow from this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'll just twist it in the middle and use some floral wire to keep it there. I'm going to trim up those edges, cut off that floral wire, and use a little twine in the middle. I'll just take a piece from my stash and just twist it around about three times and then tie it in a knot. And then I'm going to glue it right to the top of this lantern. And I'm going to return to this project later. I'm going to take that piece that I cut off that greenery and cut it in half so that I can have my stems running the way I want them. And I'm going to glue it at an angle right at the top of the lantern. And then I'll just take a few red berries, put a little hot glue, and dress it up right there in the middle. And now I'm going to take some buffalo check ribbon, and we'll just run it around the bottom and dress it up. 
nothing fancy. But I do love some red and black buffalo check. What's your favorite farmhouse ribbon? And just secure it with a little hot glue. And there we have two. And now for this third one, I'm going to take this buffalo check ribbon again and roll it around my fingers about three times. Pinch it in the middle. And I'm using just a black chenille stem, just part of one, and twist it around the middle. The black ended up looking like black velvet. And trim it off. Cut off the excess. Little fluff, opening up those loops, and I'm going to place a dot of glue right at the top of the lantern and glue it on there. And now this little red truck ribbon came from the Dollar General and I cut off a piece long enough so I could make sure that I center the truck right in the center of the front. And then of course I'll just glue it around. And that's our third one. Going back to that first one, I have these miniature wreaths in my stash, and I'm going to glue one right to the center front, and that'll just dress it up a little more. It needed one more touch. And so we have one, two, and three. I can't wait to hang them on our farmhouse Christmas tree. And there they sit. And how about all lit up? It won't be long and we can say Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use a pair of slippers from the Dollar Tree, some black felt, a pattern I traced out on some paper, some paint, an eyeball from the Dollar Tree, 100% acetone, some twine, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing we're gonna do is take some of our acetone, I finally found it, and take the paint off of the eyeball. Then we're gonna mix a little bit of our rich brown paint into our plaster chalk paint. Now I'm gonna paint that eyeball and this is going to be the nose of our gnome. I want to take this slipper apart. I want to separate the top from the bottom. So I just clip the seam and then it just tears apart really easily. Once I get it apart, I cut the back down the center and you'll see that that white fuzzy part just comes apart from the sole. Now I'm gonna cut out my pattern and then I lay it on my shoe, making sure that I put the curve at the same place the curve is on the fabric. I trace around it with my chalk pen and cut it out with my scissors. Now I need to glue that down because once I cut it, it came apart. Then I will just trim around it. Now I'm going to take my pattern and I cut it out of my felt, but this time I go straight across instead of curving it. Then I put these face down on each other and put some glue there to glue them together. I turn it inside out and then I use a paint stick to get my point. Now I'm gonna fold that fuzzy part in half. I fit it into my hat and cut it down, and then I just use some hot glue to glue it up in there. I trim around on the hat where it was sticking out. Then I take my nose and use some hot glue, and I put it right there in the curve of that slipper. Then I put a little more hot glue on it and attach it to itself. Now I'm just going to trim up his little beard and then I use my hot glue to glue the two pieces together. To make a hanger, I just take some twine, make a loop, tie a knot at the end and glue it on the back. 
and there's our little gnome. I think these ornaments are so cute. And by using felt on the back of the hat, you can now make two ornaments out of one pair of slippers. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's take this wooden star from the Dollar Tree and kick it up a few notches. We'll turn it into a cute Christmas sign that we can prop on our mantle or a table. We'll need some ribbon. I'm using this small piece left over on a roll. Some white chalk paint a little spackle to fill the hole on our wooden sign, some green pine branches left over from another project, some of this glittered vase filler from the Dollar Tree, one candy cane ornament, an old eyeshadow palette, a pine cone from this floral pick that I got at the Dollar Tree, a wooden gift tag. I got mine on clearance at Walmart and some black chalk paint. The first thing we're going to do is fill that hole at the top with a little spackle and let that dry. And now we're going to take our Waverly white chalk paint and give our star two coats. I'm going to take that wooden gift tag and remove the leather tie to it and then give it two coats of black chalk paint on all sides front and back. Now I'm taking my eyeshadow and I'm going in and distressing my star. At first I start with my paintbrush but it just wasn't stiff enough so we end up just smudging it with my fingers. I'm just aging the paint a little bit. It won't be quite as bright. Just distressing it until I get it like I want it. And now I'm taking my black gingham check ribbon and making a simple bow. I'll take some twine, wrap it around my bow in the middle several times, and then tie it off. And clip the ends. Now I'm going to glue down my little pine branch kind of at an angle across the star. And I'm taking my tag and writing Merry Christmas with my Arteza gel pen. I'm gonna replace that leather tie. I just use a little slip knot. And I had to cut it off a little bit, it was too long, so I retied the knot. And I'm going to glue it into the pine branch to hang down. And then let's put on our candy cane at an angle. Use a little hot glue and apply our little bow that we made. Place on the pine cone there. And three of those little red glittered balls from the table scatter. And that's it. I love how this turned out. I cannot wait to set it on my mantle and decorate for Christmas. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use an old light bulb, a piece of fleece that I had on hand, some chalk paint, some twine, a permanent marker, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing we're going to do is give our bulb a good coat of paint. I am using my white Waverly chalk paint. We're turning this into a snowman, so I knew I needed the white. And I do like chalk paint because it doesn't take as many coats. Once this was dry, I took my fleece and cut off a small piece of it. Then I trimmed another little piece, and this is going to be the scarf on my snowman. I trim off the ends and then I do a little bit of fringing on both ends just by cutting some slits in them. Now I trimmed up the piece that was left and I wrapped it around my light bulb to see how long I needed it to be and I trimmed that in half. Then I end up using some glue and gluing up one edge. This is going to be the rolled side of my hat. 
Now I'm going to take my scissors and cut little slits all along the other side and this is going to be the fringe at the top. We'll use a little bit of glue and glue it together. And then I slip it onto my light bulb and I use a little bit of glue around the edges to hold it down. Now I just gather it up at the top and use a little piece of twine, wrap around it and tie it in a knot. And then I take the rest of it and tie a knot in the end of that and that becomes our hanger. Now we'll attach our scarf by putting a little drop of glue on the back, wrapping it around to the front and securing it with a little more glue. I took my pencil and drew on a face with a little carrot nose and then I also sketched on a few buttons down at the bottom. We'll take our permanent marker and fill in our eyes and our mouth. Then we'll fill in our buttons. And now I'm going to use my orange chalk paint, I think it's pumpkin, and paint a nose on my snowman. And there's our snowman. There are so many different characters that you could paint on these light bulbs. Let the kids get involved. They'll have a blast and they will love seeing their ornaments on the tree. Hey y'all, this is Kay. I'm going to be using this recycled box for my project today. Some tongue depressors, this gingham and buffalo check ribbons, maybe some florals, this leftover jute twine, some black and white chalk paint, some regular Elmer's glue, my miter shears, my hot glue gun, and finally this sticker that says family. First I'm going to give my box a coat of black chalk paint. I'm going to paint all six sides. This box like I told you, came from the post office. Someone mailed me a package and I just turned the box inside out and resealed it. Now I'm going to take my miter shears and cut my tongue depressors, just taking off the snips at the end to make it nice and flush. And now I'm taking my white chalk paint and I'm going to give all of my tongue depressors a good coat of that white. I decided finally to come back in and do a second coat as well so it would have nice coverage. And now I'm just laying them out on my box to see if I have enough and if it's going to give good coverage. I ended up using exactly 12 of the tongue depressors. I taped them together and then I just used my Elmer's glue and started gluing them to the box. The tape just helped hold them together so I could make sure everything was going to line up. I got a little impatient for the glue to dry so I also came in after spreading my entire box with Elmer's glue. I came back and used some hot glue as well so I could get a fast hold. And now I'm taking my sticker. I cut it on my Cricut and I'm going to lay it down and adhere it to my board. I think the word family sums up Christmas just perfectly. And now I want to cover the outside of my box with this black and white gingham ribbon. It had a wire in each end, so I just pulled it out so that it would lie flat. And now I'm going to cut off a bit of the ribbon because it was too wide to go around the edges of the box. It did leave a few strings, but once I got everything glued down, it quit fraying. So I'm starting at the middle of the bottom, and then I will just work my way around the box. I make sure that I use the finished edge of the ribbon towards the front of my project. 
because I want it to look as finished as possible. And I just work my way around the box. I like to have big signs and small signs and all kinds of decorations on my Christmas trees. I cannot wait to see how this farmhouse tree turns out this year. This is a new one for me. And there it's finished. But I need a bow at the top, almost like wrapping a present. So I just make a simple bow, tie some ribbon around the middle, and then we'll attach it to the top of the box right in that middle. This ribbon also has wire in it, and that will help fluff the bow up nicely. And year after year, you can just reuse it again and fluff it back out. I'm going to dovetail those ends. And a little hot glue right in the center. I'm going to make a tie by using this recycled rope that I had from another project. I just tied a knot in each end and then attach it with hot glue. And there it hangs. I cannot wait to see it on our farmhouse Christmas tree this year. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's make some Christmas ornaments by turning these candy canes into a farmhouse Christmas look. I'll use a few of these berries that I got at the Dollar Tree, this fabric remnant, two different sizes of jute, the first one I got at the Dollar Tree and the second one I got at Hobby Lobby. First I'll go in and put some glue on the front of my candy cane and then start working my way around with the jute. I'm starting with the smaller of the two first, which is the one I got at the Dollar Tree. It takes quite a while to go in and carefully wrap all of the candy cane, making sure that no red or white is showing. But I'm persistent and I get the job done. And now let's start on the second one. This twine is a lot thicker than the first one, and it doesn't take nearly as long. I start at the bottom and then I work my way back up. I wanted to make sure the end was covered really well. And again, just placing some glue and working my way up. And here's our side-by-side -side comparison. And now I'm going to take one of these garland ties from the Dollar Tree and cut it into four equal pieces. And we'll use those to dress up our candy canes. We'll just use a little of our hot glue and attach a bit of that greenery to the stem of our candy cane. And then we'll do it on the second one as well. Clip off a few of these berries and place it right there in the center. And we'll just use a piece of twine and a simple slip knot. And that's how we'll hang our ornaments. Now I'm taking my fabric and I'm going to cut about a half inch piece and just rip it right across. Because I kind of want that ragged look for this one. And then I just carefully make sure I wrap the end real well before I get started. And then I'll start just wrapping at an angle, carefully up my candy cane. I'm going to do two of these, but I'm not going to show you the second one because I'm going to do the exact same thing. So just putting some glue ever so often down the candy cane and then wrapping carefully and keeping it nice and tight and covering everything that was already there. And then tuck it in at the end. We'll just cut off the excess. And now I'm going to crisscross them. I'm just going to place a little glue there. 
and then come back in with some twine, tie it tightly and wrap it around several times and tie it again. We'll use a little glue to attach some more of that greenery. And I'm gonna make a jute bow by just wrapping it several times around my hand. And then I'll take another piece of jute and tie it right in the middle. Trim it up a bit. And that'll be our bow on top. And then we'll come in with just three big berries right there in the center. To hang it, I'm going to take a simple knot of jute and then tuck it down where the jute is in the back with a little glue. And there they are, all three. I can't wait to put them on the tree. I love how these turned out. Merry Christmas, y'all. At Crafting Cousins, you always find a variety of crafts on our channel. Trish specializes in wood and I specialize in paper, but we cover a variety of topics like home decor, farmhouse decor, shabby chic, Kay specializes in wreaths and making pretty bows. There's a myriad of projects you will find on Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this set of ornaments, I'm going to use this pack of baseballs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some various clothing that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet to use as fabric, have been washed, some ribbon, some greenery, a circle to use as a template, some rubber bands, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and various tools from my work caddy. For the first ornament, I'm going to take my 10 inch circle template and put it on my sweater and trace around it. I really love this sweater. I love the texture that it has on it. So I knew that I wanted to use it for one of my ornaments. Once I got my circle cut out, I took my twine and I cut a 12 inch piece. I made a loop and I tied a knot in the end of it. And then I just glued it to the top of my baseball. Now I have gathered it all up and I'm gonna use one of my rubber bands to hold it in place and then I just fluff it out and make sure that my fabric is even all around. Now I'm gonna take some of my little black and white checked ribbon and I tie it around the top to cover the rubber band and then I take a little piece of the greenery that I had and cut that off. I thought I was gonna tie a bow in this, but I didn't like how that looked, so I just untied it and used some hot glue and attached my greenery to the top there. And then I cut one of my little bundles of red berries and glued on top of that. I trimmed my ribbon and there's our first ornament. For the second one, I'm going to use this crochet lace looking dress. I did the same thing. I traced my template and got my 10 inch circle and then I cut it out with my scissors. Now I just make my loop with my 12 inches of twine and tie a knot in the middle. But I laid it down and forgot to glue it to the top of my baseball. I gathered up my fabric and fluffed it out, then I used a rubber band around the top to hold it in place, and I realized I had not put my hanger in. So I just pulled it back, and so I could see the ball, I put a little bit of glue and put my hanger in, and it worked just fine. Now I'm gonna take some of my twine, and I wrap it around until you can't see the rubber band anymore, and glue it. Then I take some more twine, and wrap it around my fingers several times, and slip it off. Then I take three more little pieces to use for the tails, and this is going to be a bow. I take another piece of twine and wrap around the center and tie a knot. Then I just trim it and fluff it out and glue it to the top of our ornament. And there's our second one. Now for the third one, I did you can see I cut out using my 10 inch circle template with, out of this flannel shirt, but it doesn't have stretch on it like the other fabric did, so it didn't fit. So I went downstairs and I found another plate that was 11 inches and I traced it onto my flannel shirt and cut it out and this worked just fine. 
once I got my circle, I put my baseball in the middle, I tie my little loop and glue it to the top. Then I just gather my fabric up around the ball. I don't know if there was too much fabric or if I cut it wonky or what, but I did have to trim it a couple of times once I got it wrapped around. I put my rubber band around the top and I just keep adjusting my fabric to make it look even and I did trim off another edge of it. Then I thought I was going to use this red and black check ribbon, but I did not like how it looked with my fabric, so I grabbed some red grow grain ribbon that I had on hand, and I figured out how much I would need to go around my rubber band. Then I glued it in half. This was really just too wide, so when I glued it in half, it made it the perfect size to fit around our rubber band. I wrapped it around and put a drop of glue, and then I trimmed it and glued the other end and now our rubber band is covered. I took the rest of that grow grain ribbon and I just did a simple four loop bow. Just wrap your bow around itself until you get four loops. Then I took a piece of twine wrapped around the middle and tied in a knot. I trimmed that off and adjusted my bow. Then I dovetailed my ribbon and glued it to the top of our ornament. And there's our three ornaments. I am in love with how these turned out. I think they are very farmhouse chic and they are going to look wonderful on our tree. I wanted to show you that you can make ornaments really cheap and they look really good. This fabric that I used like I said was from Goodwill Outlet. It's clothing and they charge by the pound and I probably paid about two dollars for all of this and I can make multiple ornaments out of it. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's remake these ornaments from Kirkland's. They sell them two for $15.99. They are four inches squared. We will need some red and black buffalo check fabric. I have this remnant. I'm also going to be using some black and white check fabric. Change it up a bit. This floral pick. Some cut pine branches, artificial, some ribbon, and a four inch square that I drew off on a piece of cardstock. Interestingly, this box that's from last year's Christmas, some Mod Podge, and a few tools. I will use this four inch square to make a pattern for our box. I'm going to use, of course, a leftover Christmas box lid. I'm going to draw four squares in a row. And then I will draw one square out to the side of the second one. And then I will put these little flaps cut at an angle, three to the side and one at the bottom. I also need one more square to the side of that second one. Looks kind of like a cross. The first box wasn't big enough to go all the way across. So I cut an additional square, four inch square, and put four flaps on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. And that will make a box. You don't really have to worry about scoring because if you use an ink pen to do all of your drawing, it scores the paper as you go. And that's how you make a box. I'm going to lay it on my second lid because we're making two. And I'll just trim off three sides of my box first and come in. I'm going to tape it down with a little washi tape just so it doesn't slide around. I want my box to be as precise as possible. And I'll just go around with my pen and trace everything out. And now we're cutting out our second box. This box lid was bigger than the first one I started with. And now I'm taking my ruler and I'm going to go in and trace all of those lines for all of the boxes so that you see the flaps just like you did on the first box.
And if you're using a pen, like I said before, it really does score as you go, so it kind of saves a step. If you look on the internet, there are lots of print-offs of boxes, but to fit a 4x4 box, I had to kind of make my own pattern. I wanted mine to be the exact same size as the one on the Kirkland's website. And now I'm going to take Mod Podge and apply it to the outside of my boxes. You want to be kind of generous because you are using fabric. And you want to try and line up those lines as best you can so that your box looks straight. It won't be exactly perfect, but it came pretty close. Smooth it out, reapply as needed, and then I come in and make a rough cut before I apply the Mod Podge to the outside. And that's what I'm doing now, covering it with Mod Podge and sealing it well. It has kind of a cross look to it when it's turned over. And there I'm putting on the buffalo check fabric. Give it a rough cut. And a coat of Mod Podge on the outside. And then we will let these dry. They need to dry completely. And then come back in and give them a haircut. And there we have both. And now we start forming our box. I want to go back and fold those edges once again. Just give them a good crisp burnishing. And you can use a bone folder if you need to. And we're going to start assembly. You want to start with one of the side flaps, the side pieces, not the main four pieces down the side. And you can just pick two and join them together. And then I join the other side as well. And you can see after this that the box is starting to take shape. And then I'm going to glue at the top there as I kind of work my way over. Make sure you line those up because once that hot glue sets, it's set. You can use your blow dryer and heat it up and kind of get it apart again. And now we're folding in that box. And now I'm taking a piece of twine that I had in my stash and I'm going to use that for my ornament hanger. I just glue it right on top and then flood it with some glue. And then we have to go in and put in our ribbon. This ribbon looks like burlap. It actually came from Walmart in their Christmas section. And I'm going to put a piece around each side and also tack it with hot glue at the bottom just to keep it in place. And now we're taking those pine branch pieces and we're going to glue them diagonally on our box. I just push them close to the middle and cover up all my mistakes. And then I'll come in with some of those holly berries and top it off. Three little bunches. I 
I like how that turned out. I think it's very close to the Kirkland's one. And guess what? I have less than $2 in my two boxes. That's a pretty good dupe. Merry Christmas, y'all! Hey, y'all, it's Trish. As you know, Kay and I received some products from Arteza that they wanted us to review. And I got these gorgeous wood slices and this pack of 12 white gel pens. So I'm going to show you a quick project that I did with these wood slices. The first thing I did was drill a hole in the top of these. That way I can put some twine in them to hang them up. These are going to be ornaments. I wanted my background to be dark because I'm going to be writing on it with my white gel pens. So I used one of those furniture repair markers that you get from Dollar Tree and I just did a circle on the inside staining this dark and leaving that beautiful live edge so that you could see what it was. Now I have wanted some personalized photo ornaments for a while so I printed out some of my favorite photos of my family and cut those out to apply to these. I chose to use black and white photos but you can just as easily do this with color and now I'm just doing my little technique that I love so much where you take water and paint around the image that you want and then you just lightly tear it and it gives you those wispy edges and makes it kind of look old. So I did this to all three of my photos. I outlined them with water and then I lightly tore them. Now I'm just going to use a little Mod Podge to attach these to my wood slices. I used a very light hand on this because I didn't want them to get wrinkled or to smear my ink. I put just a little bit on the back and then I went around those edges and sealed them in, but I tried not to get it on the rest of the ornament because we are going to be writing on that. Now that those are dry, I'm taking one of these Arteza white gel pens. I used the medium weight one, I think it's 0.8, and I'm writing in words on my ornaments. Now you can do any word you want. I put my dog's name under hers, and my three grandchildren, I wrote family on it. And then with the one of me and my husband, I wrote love. Now you could use any words you want. You could even leave the pictures off and do the Ray Dunn type ornaments and write in words. These pens are great. Now for a hanger, I just took a little piece of twine and I folded in half, thread it through that hole that I drilled. I make that loop, then I slide those strings through there and tie a knot in the end and that makes me a hanger. And there's our ornaments. I love these so much. I have wanted them for a while and I am so going to enjoy having them on my Christmas tree this year. Hey y'all, this is Kay. Let's make a quick farmhouse Christmas ornament. I'm using this leftover piece from a project from a board at the Dollar Tree. This joy from the Dollar Tree. A big fabric square. In buffalo check. Some ribbon from my stash. Some of these floral picks, some Mod Podge, some Fix All Adhesive from the Dollar Tree, and a few tools. First thing I'm going to do is take my Mod Podge and generously apply it to my little sign here. And then I'm going to, of course, smooth out my fabric and apply it to this really thick cardboard. This was left over from that Scarecrow sign I did. Smoothing it out well, and then I'll apply coat to the top as well. I'm cutting off about 18 inches of this black and white ribbon, crossing it, pinching it in the middle, and I'm going to use a piece of that thin ribbon to tie right in the middle to secure my bow. And I'll just trim up those edges and fluff it. I'm going to cut off some of this greenery from this floral pig, as well as a few of these berries. Cut off that excess fabric I left. I'm going to glue the greenery to the right and left at the top. 
place the bow in the center, and send some berries right in the middle of the bow to dress it up. And then I'll apply the joy with some fix all adhesive. And there it is. I hope you enjoyed my quick and easy farmhouse Christmas ornament. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're gonna use a couple of pine cones I picked up in the yard, the hats from these gift bags, but you can use fabric, a couple pieces of this foam vase filler, some paint, both chalk and acrylic, some twine, a skewer, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I'm gonna do is take out a couple of these little foam filler balls and I'm gonna use my Beachcomber Beige acrylic paint and give them a good coat of paint. I found that the easiest way to do this is to just stick a skewer in the end of it and when we glue these down, you're not gonna be able to see the hole so it works out just fine. I like the texture on these. It makes it look like that he's gonna have a lumpy nose. Now I'm gonna take the two hats from these gift bag sets. Now these little hats are really easy to make. I'll put a link up in the cards from where I have made these little hats before, but I'm using these just because they were easy and I'm gonna hot glue them down to my pine cone. I glue my nose onto it and then I glue my hat around my nose. Just fit your hat on there, put a little bit of glue in the back to hold it, and then I take my little ball and I glue it on for his nose, and then I just glue the hat down around it. These are so easy, the kids would love making these. I like my hat to flop over, that's just a personal preference thing, so I put a dot of glue there and glue it down. Now we're gonna take some of our white chalk paint and a fan brush, and I just put some of the paint on the brush, and then I rub it off on a wet wipe, and then I just lightly dust it on the front of my pine cone. This is gonna be his beard. It doesn't take a lot, just dust it along. To make a hanger for these, I took some twine, I made a loop, and tied a knot in the end. You see me do this all the time, and then I just glue it to the back of his little head. And there's our gnomes. I think these are so stinking cute. I can't wait to make a few more for our tree. This would be a great project to get the kids involved in. It is so easy and they would have so much fun. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's use one of these wooden stars that I got at Michael's. They come in a pack of five for about 99 cents. Three of these wooden red beads and some jute twine and a couple of pine cones from this pick that I got at the Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and attach what will be our hanger on the back of this star. I'm just using a loop of twine and then we'll just glue it right down the center. And now I'm going to start wrapping my twine around this star. I just put a drop of glue at the top and work my way down. This is not a very large twine, so I have to be very careful to keep it close together. So I want to keep it nice and tight. And then I just move over to the second point of our star and do the same thing. Wrap it continuously around, placing a drop of hot glue on the back ever so often. And when I get to the end of this one, I will need to glue it and cut it. And I'll just continue doing this around my star until I cover all five points with this jute twine. And now I'm just using my wire cutters and cut off one of those pine cones. And I'm just going to glue it right in the middle of our star. And now I'm taking those red beads and I'm going to pull them down on my loop of twine at the top. And then I'll just tie a knot close to the last one. And there it is, hanging on the tree. I love how this turned out. Merry Christmas! Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's make two quick and easy farmhouse Christmas ornaments using these Dollar General gift boxes. 
They just kind of fold in at the end. We'll use these two Dollar Tree inserts from a couple of frames that I dismantled for a project. Some red chalk paint. Some ribbon from my stash. This twine that I got from the Dollar Tree. Some Mod Podge and some hot glue. And of course, a few tools. The first thing I want to do is remove all of this backing from these inserts that came out of some Dollar Tree frames. It'll just clean it up and make the back look a lot nicer. And now I'm taking that red chalk paint. I'm now going to paint it all over the edges and the front. Thank goodness it dries a little bit different shade of red, deeper and much prettier. And then I'm going to take apart my boxes. These are called gift boxes at the Dollar General. And I'm going to trim them down. I'm just going to take off all of the red and square it up. And I did that for both of them. And now I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and use that as my glue to attach the pieces from my gift boxes right in the center of our two red squares. And I will do that for both pieces. And now I'm taking some ribbon and I'm just going to fold it dovetail my edge and make a really simple bow by pinching it in the middle and tying this smaller ribbon around the middle and then fluffing it up. Trim off the excess and then we're going to glue it right on top and let it sort of hang down. And that's the first one. And then I decided I would use a different ribbon for the second one. And I'm using a piece of that twine, tying it around the middle, wrapping it several times, and tying it again. And then I'll just cut off the extra. And then we'll attach the bow right there in the center. To make a tie for our ornaments, I just take a piece of twine, knot it at the end, turn it on the back, put it in the center with a little hot glue, and then flood it on top to secure it well. And there they are, guys. Two quick and easy, simple farmhouse ornaments. Merry Christmas, y'all. Please give this video a big thumbs up. It really does help us so much. If you like crafting, we'd love to see pics. Come on over to Facebook and join our group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. We will leave a link down in the description box below. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of the wood slices I got from Arteza, a flashlight from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some Waverly chalk paint, some wording I traced off the computer, a drill, my glue gun and some glue sticks, a sharpie, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was drill a hole in the top of my wood slice so that I can put some twine in it for a hanger. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and I'm going to paint the inside of my wood slice. You guys know that I love leaving this lip around whenever I paint these wood slices. I just think it's really pretty to be able to see the natural wood. Once that dries, I take my wording that I traced off of the computer and I use my pencil and color all over the back. Then I lay it on my project and trace over the letters and this transfers it to my project. I could have used carbon paper, but this was just faster. Once I get my wording on there, I take my permanent marker and I fill them in. Now we're going to take the top off of that flashlight and use some hot glue and attach it right in the middle. For a hanger, we're going to take some twine, thread it through, loop it, and then tie a knot in the top. And there's our ornament. 
This one is as simple as it gets, but I think it is absolutely adorable. I love the way the flashlight makes it look like it really could be a cam. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Kay. I'm going to be using one of these wood planks that I got from the Dollar Tree. They are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. I will use a piece of this black and white gingham fabric, some wooden letters that I got at the Dollar Tree, this burlap ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is one and a half inches wide, some jute twine. I got mine at Hobby Lobby some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, and finally, some of these red wooden beads. The first thing I'm going to do is paint one side of my plank in this black chalk paint, and I'll also paint all of the edges in the black as well, so it will look finished from all sides. I will be using these four wooden letters to spell Noel. I'm going to come in first of all and give them a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. It takes about one and a half coats to get them fully covered. Now that our wooden plank is dry, I'm going to apply a heavy coat of Mod Podge because this fabric is quite thick. And then I'll come in with my fabric and I'll line it up as best I can to keep it even on all sides. And then I'll finish it up with a top coat of Mod Podge as well. And when the Mod Podge is completely dry, I'm going to come in and just trim off any excess. Now let's place on our wooden letters, just using my hot glue gun, and I'm going to line them up starting at the bottom. I'll make a simple loop of twine, tie a knot, and then I'll glue it right in the center of the back, and that will be how we hang our ornament on the tree. But first I'm going to string on three of our red wooden beads at the top of our hanger to dress it up a little more. And I'll just tie a knot to tie it off. And now let's use our burlap ribbon and make just a simple looped bow. Pinch it in the middle. And then I'm taking a piece of our twine and twisting it around several times and tying it off. Trim it and fluff it and glue it right there in the middle of the top. And there it is. Just a simple farmhouse ornament, but I love how it turned out. Merry Christmas, y'all. Trish again. For this project, we're going to use some mini craft sticks from Walmart. The December picture off the back of these calendars from Dollar Tree some Waverly chalk paint in white, some Mod Podge, some twine, some super glue wood glue, and several tools from my work caddy. First, I go ahead and cut out one of these little pictures so I will know the scale that I need to make my palettes. Then I just line up my little craft sticks and see what fits. We end up needing six sticks for each palette. Then we'll also need an additional two for the back. Now I'm just going to trim off those round ends. I want this to look like a palette, so I can't use those round ends. I cut one and then I use it to cut down the rest. We end up having 24 for this project. Now that I have my craft sticks cut, I use my mahogany furniture repair marker and stain all of my sticks. I love using these repair markers. I know I've told y'all this so many times, but they stain really well, they don't stink, and they dry almost instantly. I made sure to cover the front, the back, and all the sides of my stick. Now that our sticks are stained, I'm going to put them together to make a little palette. 
I use some of my super glue wood glue and a little bit of my hot glue and then I stick these side to side to make the little palettes. Once I have six together, I take two more and put a little bit of the glue on the flat side of it and press it down to the back and this makes our little palette. I did notice that mine weren't exactly straight. I'm not sure how I did that. So once I got these put together, I used my scissors and I evened those out and then I used my little marker and finished up those edges again. Once I had these together, I trimmed them up and then restain the edges. And now I'm going to use a little bit of my Waverly chalk paint and my chunky brush and I'm just going to distress these a little bit. I ran it over the edges and just a little bit on the front in case you could see it. Now we'll cut out our other two little pictures. I think these are so pretty. I picked up several of these calendars from the Dollar Tree and these three are my favorites. I wanted these edges to not be so straight. I wanted to have that little soft effect to it. And I know y'all have seen me do this technique before. I took some water and a paintbrush and I wet the edges and then I just kind of tear it a little bit. This gives it a wispy effect. One of our sweet subscribers told me what this was called and for the life of me, I am drawing a blank and I cannot remember, but I love this technique. Y'all can see that my little bucket was leaking. I just realized that and I figured, you know what? I'm already recording, let's just go with it. So I just stuck those edges into the side and let them get wet and then I continued to tear them. And once we were finished, I cleaned it all up. Now I'm gonna use my Mod Podge and I cover my palette. I put a little bit on the back of my picture and I apply the picture to the palette. I let these dry overnight and now I'm going to take my Zacto knife and just go along the ridges of this palette. I wanted to make it look old and distressed so I just cut right where those lines are. I wanted to round off the edges of this. It was a little sharp, so I took a piece of sandpaper and you literally just rub it across it. And this wood is so soft that it just rounds it off really nicely. Then I took a little piece of my sandpaper and ran over the top just to give it a little more distressing and make it look old. To make a hanger for our ornaments, I just cut three pieces of twine, I made a loop and tied a knot into the end of each one. Now I use a little bit of hot glue and glue it into the middle of my palette on the back. Y'all know I love a bow. <laughs> So I took some of my twine, I wrapped it around two of my fingers about five times, and then I slipped that off and I use another piece of twine to tie a knot in the middle of it. This makes a super cute little bow, and then I use a little bit of glue and attach it to the top of our ornament. And there's our little palette ornaments. I am really pleased with how these turned out. I love that they are really rustic and I think they're going to look perfect on our farmhouse tree this year. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For today's project, let's make over this gingerbread man ornament that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use this burlap bandana that I got at Hobby Lobby, some Mod Podge, a few buttons from my stash, some red chalk paint, a small piece of this red and white gingham fabric, and just a few simple tools. The first thing I want to do is remove all of these wooden pieces that came on the gingerbread man. I just use my blow dryer and heat them up and that helps a whole lot. And then I just sort of pry them off using my Cricut tools. And I'm going to save all those pieces to reuse. 
and then I use a little sandpaper to clean it up and get off all the glue and residue. I'm using a little caulk to cover up that hole at the top. And now I'm just pre-cutting a piece of this burlap bandana to put on the gingerbread man. I'm going to spread Mod Podge all over the wooden piece pretty generously. Because the burlap is really thick, it takes a lot of glue. So I'm going to smooth that out as best I can, and then I'll apply a coat of Mod Podge to the top as well. This will do several things. It will stiffen the fabric and make it easier to cut, and it will just make sure it is stuck well to the gingerbread. And now I'm taking that little bow tie that came on him and cut a small piece of that gingham fabric and cover it with Mod Podge as well. And then give it a coat on top also. And now I'm cutting it out after it has completely dried. And I'll cut out the gingerbread man as well. And I'll use a combination of scissors and my utility knife to cut him out. And don't worry guys, I was really careful. I know it looks like I'm going so fast here, but I really wasn't. I did not even cut my finger once. It takes a little time for this part, but part of that is because I am being so careful. I also don't want my fabric to fray. I want it to stay flat and nice. And there he is. And so I'm trying out that bow tie and I need to paint the pieces that were on him. I'm going to give them two good coats of this red chalk paint. And I forgot to show the part where I put the buttons on, but I glued down his bow tie, two flat buttons down his tummy, and two raised buttons that are as his eyes. And then I'm going to show you that they had shanks on the back so I just used my wire cutters and I cut off the shank and then it glued down flat. It wasn't a problem at all. I think he looks so cute. So we'll put these pieces back on now that they're dry. And we'll complete our gingerbread man. I think he is so cute. I think he's kind of farmhouse and a little bit rustic. For the tie, I'm just reusing the one that came on him, put a knot at the bottom, and then glue it to the back of his head. And there he is. I love how he turned out. I think he's going to be so cute on our farmhouse Christmas tree. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use this Scrabble game that I picked up from Goodwill. It was on sale, so I only paid $1.50 for it some ribbon, any color you like, some twine, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. The first thing I did was start separating out my letters and I found out really quickly why this was at Goodwill. <laughs> it was missing at least half of the letters, but I was lucky and I was able to find all the letters I needed to spell out the names of our family members. Now you could do your names, you can do words. You could do peace, joy, Noel, Merry Christmas. You can spell out anything you want and make the cutest ornaments with these. Now I'm gonna take my ribbon and I took the person who had the most letters in their name and figured out how much ribbon I needed for that. I dovetail my end and then I lay it back out and this is going to help me judge how much ribbon I need for my other ornaments. We had two members that had four letters in their name and three that had five. Now I'm just dovetailing the ends of my ribbon and we're going to take our hot glue and glue our letters down. That's all there is to it. Once I get my letters down, I turn over my top and make a loop and glue that down as well. This is such a simple way to personalize your tree and it goes really fast. I love showing y'all these easy ornaments. 
Now that we have all of our letters glued down, we're going to take our twine and cut off six pieces. And then I just thread that through the loop and tie a knot in the top and this gives us a hanger for our ornaments. Now I'm going to take my twine and make a simple bow. I hold on to one piece for a tail and then I wrap it around three fingers about six times. I slip off those loops and take another piece of twine, wrap it around the middle and tie a knot. Then you just fluff it out and use some glue to attach it to the top of your ornament. I'll show you that one more time. Wrap it around your fingers about six times, slip off your loops, take a piece of twine, wrap around the middle, tie a knot. Then we're going to glue it to the top of our ornament and trim the tails. I'll also put up in the cards a video where we slowed this down. And there's our ornaments. This is such a simple way to personalize your Christmas tree. I think it fits in with any farmhouse decor, but you can also add these into any tree to give it a bit of personalization. The best part is you can pass them on to the kids as they grow older. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Today's challenge is to use these Dollar Tree chippy words. They're pretty thick and nice. I'm going to turn this word family into an ornament for our farmhouse Christmas tree. It's really quite large, so it'll make a nice showpiece. I'm going to use some scrapbook paper in these four patterns. I'll use some Mod Podge and a paintbrush to spread it on. I'll use some black acrylic paint and one piece of chalk and a piece of twine and my heavy duty stapler. The first thing I'm going to do is go in with a pencil and trace out my word onto some cardstock. I just tape two pages together and then I'm going to go in and cut out the individual letters. I actually had two sets of these letters because I just made another copy on my copy printer scanner. And I cut out every other letter from one set of words. And then I cut out the opposite ones from the other set. I know this was a roundabout way to go about doing it, but I just wanted to perfect how they were going to sit on the wooden letters. You can see there, if you look carefully, that I'm using two different sets for every other word. Excuse me, every other letter. This process is quite lengthy, but I find cutting kind of soothing, so I don't mind. And there they are, almost cut out. And now I have them cut out and I lay them down and check the fitting on my ornament. I'm going to take the twine off the back. I will not be reusing that. And I'm making my own chalk paint using a recipe we talked about in Craft Chat one Saturday. We'll drop a card above. But it takes a lot of mixing. And I'm going to go in and paint the entire thing, all of those little nooks and crannies, and both sides with this black chalk paint. I no longer had any black chalk paint in my stash, so just pulled out that recipe and got busy. And yes, I did get that paint all over my hands. In between drying, I had to actually go and wash them and start again. And now that that's dry, let's move to the next step. I'm going to take my letters and turn right side down on the back of this scrapbook paper. I just decided what pattern I wanted to use. I'm using a little washi tape to hold it down and trace it out with a pencil. You've seen me do this before. And that's what I do with every letter.
And now I have all of them rough cut out. And I'm just checking to make sure I like the color arrangement. We'll get this F cut out for you. And now let's fit them back on the letter again. I like that. So I'll come in with some Mod Podge and very carefully put down my letters. I'm going to start again doing every other one. That way, if there's any overlap, I'll just come back and place those letters on top. But they turned out to be pretty close. When I'm using scrapbook paper and Mod Podge, I like to make sure they dry completely and then come back and put my top coat on. And that's what I'm doing now, giving them a good top coat of Mod Podge. And I'm going to staple on that heavier duty twine with my heavy duty stapler in the same spots where it was originally. I love this. I'm going to put a drop of glue just to make sure it doesn't come off. And there it is. I love how this turned out. I think it's going to be a beautiful addition to our farmhouse Christmas tree. We hope you enjoyed our compilation video today because we certainly enjoyed sharing our crafts with you. We hope that you will join us all week for Made It Monday, Wild Card Wednesdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!